Inside. I'm Cheryl. I'm the resident chef here and today we're going to be working in our beautiful Gaggenau kitchen. Um, my counter space here is fantastic because my electric cooktop also doubles as extra counter space for little things that we'd like to do today. So with it being summer approaching and everyone's getting out of class and school, coming up for barbecues, having little summer get-togethers, we'd like to show you just a few bite-sized apps that you can put out that will satisfy the whole family and have the friends talking for days. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our bruschetta. So what I have here is um, diced tomatoes. You can use fresh, you can use cans. If you're gonna use can, drain them a bit and use about two cans, okay? So our diced tomatoes, we're going to add fresh chopped garlic, three cloves of it, and we're also gonna use our fresh basil. Now with something like bruschetta, you wanna use the freshest ingredients because the recipe only calls for very few things. So we wanna use the best of the best to bring out our flavors, okay? So here we are with our fresh chopped garlic, and I'm gonna dice this up, and then we'll move on to our basil. So when you crack your garlic with your knife, it'll crack open that shell, and it'll make for easier cutting for you so that you don't have to fool around with garlic for too long. Okay, here we go. So what else we're gonna be adding to our bruschetta today is balsamic vinegar, a little bit of fresh cracked salt and pepper, and it's going to be perfect. We're gonna put that on a little baguette, a French baguette that we'll chop down into um, little bite-sized pieces because when it's hot out and you're hosting a bunch of people, you don't wanna have a bunch of heavy food, right? You wanna have something your guests can take bites of, deliciousness, have with a cocktail, and um, not need a bunch of plates and utensils and all those things that you will have to end up cleaning later. So we got our garlic and we're going to add that right to our tomato. Now we have our fresh basil. So what I like to do is I like to take the leaves, stack them all up together, okay? And then we're just going to simply take that stack of leaves and we're going to roll it, twist it all together up into a little twist, kind of like you would do with a burrito, okay? And then we're going to take our knife and we're going to cut strips right in that little fold that we just made, okay? We're going to get that fresh basil all chopped down properly. Now we're getting the basil nice and fine because we want to release the flavors in our fresh herbs. So we're just going to add that right to our tomato and garlic mixture. Now I have two extra little pieces of basil here that I'm going to do the same process to, and I'm going to roll them up and chop them just for a little garnish on top of our bruschetta, okay? There we go. Now we don't need this one to be so fine because we're going to use it for garnish on the top. So we're going to scoop that over for a second and pull out our beautiful French baguette. Now I chose a French baguette because these slices are perfect to do like an appetizer size. So I'm going to take half of that. And I'm just going to cut it down into pieces. Now you can take your bruschetta and you can um, put it on top of the bread just like I'm going to do today. No need to do anything. But if you would like to, you can um, toast off your bread, make it a little crunchier. You can um, rub a head of garlic onto it and give it a little garlic flavor. You can put a little bit of melted butter, whatever you like, whatever your flavor taste changes with everybody. So whatever your flavor palette is, whatever you like, you do it at your house. So I'm gonna bring out our plate really quick. We'll line up these pretty little baguette pieces. See what I meant about the perfect bite size? And then I'm gonna go ahead and season my tomatoes and we'll get it right on this plate, okay? Now I'm not gonna use the little bruschettas that have um, holes in the center because we don't want it to spill all over our guests, right? Tomatoes have a lot of juice. So there we go. We'll put that to the side. Now we'll go back to our tomato mixture. So what I'm going to add to this is about two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. So I'm just going to pour that right in. I'm going to eyeball it. If you want to at home pull out your tablespoon measure, please do. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. So we're going to add a little fresh cracked salt, a little pepper. We're going to give that a mix. Now, I feel like when you have tomato and garlic and fresh basil, the smell is so fantastic. And the look of the colors together 
is perfect. We all eat with our eyes. You are attracted to the food first by what it looks like, right? Because it looks so yummy and delicious. You can't wait to get a piece of it. So we're going to add this mixture right to our little bruschettas, our little toast, right? Now, uh, the proper pronunciation, they say, is bruschetta. So if you want to impress your guests, you tell them you have little bruschetta appetizers waiting for them outside. So we're just going to add a little tomato to each, okay? Then we're going to go back and we're going to grab that um, fresh basil that we chopped down and we put to the side so that we can do a little garnish on top because you want each little piece to look nice and pretty for your guests. So now after we put our bruschetta together, we're going to move on to our second appetizer. So our second appetizer today is going to be our caprese skewers. So caprese skewers are made of fresh basil, mozzarella, and cherry tomato or grape tomato, whatever you prefer. So let's clean up this plate, make it nice and neat looking for our guests. And then we're going to go back and add that little bit of garnish, right? Each one gets a little bit, just like so, nice and easy. And it looks delicious already. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a little peek at how our bruschetta turned out, okay? So we're going to add some caprese skewers to the rest of this plate. So I'm going to clean off my cutting board really quickly. Okay. Caprese skewers are super simple. So you're just going to take a wooden bamboo, bamboo skewer that which you would use for like barbecue or anything like that. Now you don't need to soak them because they're not going on the grill. So we can just use them as they are. And they are so simple. What you're going to do is get um, container of fresh mozzarella and you're going to add it to your cherry tomato and basil. So I'm just going to open up the container carefully because it has to sit in its own brine. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take my grape tomatoes and I'm just going to give them a slice in half. Okay. So we're going to grab a few of them, slice them in half, and then we'll be able to show you how to put our skewers together. Now, let me teach you a little trick. If you're going to do this with cherry tomatoes, that's um, a smaller than a grape tomato. And sometimes if you're making a lot, it's a, a lot, um, it's a lot to go back and cut each individual tomato. So I'd like to teach you guys a trick. If you grab two plates and you line up all your cherry tomatoes in between those two plates, one plate on the bottom, one plate on the top, you're going to run your knife as you're holding it run your knife through the middle of the plate and you'll get all those cherry tomatoes at one time and you won't have to go back and do individuals over and over and over again. So that's really helpful for time, but be careful with your knife and make sure that you have um, a dish rag or something underneath that would help uh, keep that balance. You don't want to slip and cut yourself. That's the last thing we want for you here again. So we'll see. So, I am going to reach back for my basil. Now I have everything together. If I'm going to switch right over to doing hot appetizers, all I have to do is clean this tabletop off and it becomes my cooktop. Simple as that. So let's get this basil out. Now with our basil here, we're just going to pull straight off of the vine and we're not going to dice these. We're going to leave them as the leaf. We're just going to tear that leaf in half because we want that beautiful look of the green against the red against the white just like the Italian flag. So what we're gonna do is rip those in half, just like we talked about. Now they don't have to be perfect. You can see I'm just tearing with my hands because they are gonna look beautiful regardless. And then we're just gonna put our skewers together. So what I like to do is a tomato on the top. So just carefully push that through. Then you're gonna add a bowl of mozzarella and then you're going to add your little leaf of basil and you're going to continue the process over and over until you reach the bottom of that skewer. So we're going to add another bowl of mozzarella and add our leaf and one more time we'll do that. And then we're going to lay this beauty right next to those bruschetta that we just did and you will have a beautiful plate to offer your guests as they walk through have a cocktail, take a tour of your home. Nothing's going to spill or make a big mess. So let's make two of those to show them off. So again, I'm going to skewer my tomato. Oh, my skewer came off, so let's do a new one. I'm going to skewer my tomato and add my, ba my basil and then a little bowl of cheese. 
And we're going to do that three times over, okay? Tomato, basil, cheese, and back to our tomato. Okay, guys. So here we have our finished product. It's going to be our bruschetta and tomato caprese skewers for your guests to enjoy. Now we're going to move on to our hot portion of the video, and I'm going to show you guys how to make arancini. Arancini is Italian rice balls. They are perfect. You put them right on the end of its uh, toothpick and put out a little marinara sauce. People can dip and keep going. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. back for our hot appetizer portion of the show. We're here in our gorgeous Jen Air kitchen. This is our living kitchen over here at Gerhard's Glenside, and you've seen me film here before on Gen Saucy. So we're gonna move on to our arancini. Arancini are Italian rice balls, and they are perfect for a little hot appetizer to go with our bruschetta and caprese scoops. So what I have here is um, four cups of cold, cooked, long grain rice, okay? So what I'm gonna add to that is uh, two cups of Parmesan cheese, so I'm going to sprinkle that in, and then I'm also going to mix up one egg. I'm just going to beat that a little bit to get it the yolk and the white together so we get a consistent color. And then I'm going to pour that right into my rice and cheese mixture. Pour that right in, and then I'm going to use my best kitchen tool, which is my two hands and start mixing this all together. Now this is gonna get super sticky, okay? But that's what we want. That's what's gonna keep our rice bowl together when we go to fry it in our oil. So I'm just gonna combine all of these. You'll start to see that your rice is taking on the color from your Parmesan and your egg, and that's good. That's exactly what we want. So now I feel like we need a little more egg to make this just a little more sticky. So I'm going to add one more egg. Beat that up a little bit as we just did. And pour it right in. So that's gonna make your recipe have two eggs now, okay? We really need this rice to be nice and sticky. Now, with our arancini, we're going to do a little bit of a, a marinara dipping sauce. So I'm gonna show you guys a really simple and easy tomato sauce that is um, no cook. You're just gonna warm it up for your guests or you can even leave it room temperature as you'll be serving your arancini nice and warm anyway. Okay, so this is a good sticky mixture that we got going on here and that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna brush off my hands just a little bit so that I can work with the mozzarella that we're about to put in the center. So what we're gonna do here, I have little pre-made mozzarella balls. They are perfect for arancini. So you're just gonna take a little handful of your rice mixture, okay? You're gonna make a little bowl and you're gonna flatten that bowl out a little bit, just like so, nice cup in your hand. Then you're gonna add your mozzarella bowl straight to the center and you're gonna close that rice all around the mozzarella, okay? If you need a little more, that's fine. So you're really gonna squeeze it together because you want that bowl to stay nice and tight when it goes into the fryer. Just like you were making a meatball at home, you're gonna give it a nice squeeze. Make sure none of that cheese comes running out. That's the last thing we want, right? So I've got it nice and mixed here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to transfer one beaten egg into my cup and I'm going to roll my arancini into the egg and then into the breadcrumb mixture that I have here. You can use any breadcrumbs. You can use plain and put a little Italian seasoning. You can use Italian breadcrumbs. You can use whatever's in your house. Panko will work for this. Same with the rice, long grain rice, any kind of sticky rice you have. The stickier, the better. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, just a quick, and that's it, to stretch my egg out just a bit. And I'm going to dip my arancini right into the egg mixture, swirl it around a bit, and then get it covered in these beautiful breadcrumbs. You're also going to use your breadcrumbs to help keep your bowl together, okay? We're going to put him to the side, and we'll make two more, and then we'll fry them off, okay? 
So I'm going to go right back to that rice mixture. You're going to want to squeeze it in your hand, okay? You need to start forming the ball before the cheese goes in, okay? Now we're going to add a little piece of mozzarella right in the center. Put a little more rice on the opposite side. Form a nice ball, just like so. Now what I like to do when I eat my arrochini is I like to have a little marinara sauce on the side. I can split it open and pull it apart and that beautiful mozzarella will show up just like when you're eating a mozzarella stick. I love the gooeyness of it. So this is our second arrochini. It's going right into the egg mixture. Then it'll go right back into our breadcrumb mixture that we have here. And again, I'm squeezing nice and tight in my hands, okay? Because we want that bowl to stay together when it goes into the fryer. So that's number two. And let's do a third. So now these are a nice portion of arancini. You can do a smaller one. You can do an entree size. You can do whatever you would like for your house or your event. Whatever works for you. Mine are about, I would say, a handful. Maybe like a little baseball size. So we're going to roll this one more time into our egg. Get it nice and coated so we can pick up those bread crumbs. There we go. Now I think that this is the perfect combination to go with our bruschetta that we made and our caprese that we made. I think it is a nice way to have everything coincide together on your menu. All right, so we have three arrochini ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I have about four to five inches of vegetable oil that I've been heating to proper temperature. So you're gonna to wanna, to, if you need to at home, use a candy thermometer, you're gonna want that oil to be up to 375 degrees. Um, and I have a pot here all set and ready to go. I'm gonna move my pot over closer to camera so you guys can see. Be very, very careful when you're using hot oil, okay? Obviously it can become a very dangerous situation very easily. Now here with my Gen Air stove, it's very simple because everything is a nice flat surface and I can slide slowly, not hurt myself. Plenty of space to work. We love our Gen Air kitchen here. Okay, so let's get our Adam cheese into the pan. So I'm gonna remove that lid nice and slow and easy. And I am going to take my arancini and I'm going to put it on my slotted spoon and then slowly lower it into my hot oil, okay? We're not gonna to wanna to drop these because that would make a big splash and you could get really hurt. So we're gonna simply just lower those arancini right in. So these will take about maybe five, six minutes, depending on how golden brown you like them and how hot your oil is. Now you want your oil to come to the proper heating temperature because if it doesn't, you'll get a greasy arancini and that's not what you want, right? You want a nice, crispy arancini. Now, the first time I had arancini was at a restaurant and I fell in love with them. And I thought to myself, wow, these are so delicious. I have to make them for myself at home. And once I saw how easy the process really was, there was no stopping me. So I hope that you guys can garner that from this uh, episode of Gan Saucy. I hope you guys try our recipes at home. So what I'll be doing, um, I'll put links at the bottom of our YouTube page. Please join us at Getting Saucy with Cheryl on YouTube, and we'll upload all of our Getting Saucy episodes to that. And I will put links to the recipes in my description of the YouTube video and also on our Facebook pages, okay? So I'm just making more arancini while these ones are frying off. We're gonna give them a few moments. My oil is nice and hot. And I'm gonna pull those out, okay? So we'll put this one to the side and we'll work on the ones that are coming out. So what I have is a paper tail lined plate to grab all the grease from the arancini. And I'm gonna put that right next to my plate so I don't have to go very far, okay? I'm gonna put it on this side so you guys can see. Our nice and golden brown arancinis coming out, ooh. Okay, one, two, three arancinis. And the first thing you're going to want to do when your arancini come out of the hot oil is to give them a nice bit of salt, okay? While they're hot, while the oil's hot, that's how you're going to want to do it. So we'll grab our serving plate and we will add our arancinis right to the serving plate. And what I'm going to add is some toothpicks so people can grab what they would like. And I'm going to show you that with marinara sauce that we talked about, okay? So let's give our guests a little something to pick up their arancinis with. 
perfect, just like that. Okay, so now what I have here is our tomato sauce. This is just a can of crushed tomatoes. Um, you can obviously use fresh. Um, you can use um, jarred sauce, whatever you feel comfortable with. So what I'm gonna do for just a quick, easy dipping sauce is I'm going to add fresh sea salt and fresh cracked, fresh cracked black pepper. Oh, it's a tongue twister, wasn't it? And then a little bit of basil and oregano. I'm using dried herbs here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them a nice rub between my fingers to release their flavors, okay? So I would say just a bit in your hand. And a little bit of that oregano. So that's basil and oregano that I'm adding. And you are just going to give it a little stir and voila. The perfect tomato dipping sauce for your adult cheese, okay? So just give them a good stir. Make sure all your ingredients are incorporated. I did mine a little messy, so I'm just gonna clean up my side so I have a nice presentation. Okay. And there we go. So we have our hot anoncinis and dipping sauce with our bruschetta and caprese skewers all set to go. So next what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm going to set up a mini version of dessert because you wanna add all for your guests something sweet after have all this delicious finger food. So I'm gonna move this to the side. I absolutely love how much counter space I have to work with in this kitchen. It's fantastic. Anyone with a small kitchen knows how amazing it is to have room to cook the way you would like to. You need that space. It's very important. Okay, so next we're going to do just a simple dessert because we've spent all this time making our appetizers. So what I have here is um, six dessert shells. You can make them yourself. You can buy them at the store. They're just a few dollars. Inexpensive way to feed your guests. So I have fresh strawberries here. Uh, pre-rinse obviously and I'm just going to pull a few out just like so and I'm going to give those a quick slice so we can get them on our dessert shelves and be out the door. Now I think that these are the perfect refreshment for a nice warm summer day. It's very lovely to have a little bit of sweet while you're eating so many delicious foods. Everybody wants a bite of dessert, right? So we're just going to go ahead and slice down these uh, strawberries. And if you would like, if you um, want to chop down your strawberries beforehand, roll them in a little bit of sugar. Um, that'll make them super sweet, but ours are perfect in season, so no sugar necessary. So we're just going to give those a little chop, and then I'm going to come back in and get them a little bit smaller. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these beautiful little strawberries and put them on a bed of whipped cream and then put a little bit of whipped cream on top because you can never have enough whipped cream, right? Okay. So I'm going to take just a can of whipped cream. Whatever brand that you prefer is perfectly fine. Um, you can also make your own whipped cream by taking um, a cup of heavy cream and beating it to stiff stiff peaks with a little bit of sugar but for the to save a little time nothing wrong with a little can of cool whip. so we're just going to add a little bed to each and we're going to add some of our chopped strawberries just like so they'll stay on the plate for me now I like to make sure that my serving dish is nice and clean. So if while you're doing this, you get a little bit of juice from the strawberries on your plate or whatever, just give it a little um, touch up with your paper towel up. See, just like I did right there. You wanna have a nice clean plate, okay? Especially with something that's beautiful as a little strawberry shortcake. So here's our little berries. They're gorgeous as they are. And I think what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of our fresh basil to the top. I think that would be perfect way to show off our dessert. So I have inside your um, fresh basil, you will have extra large leaves and some really small leaves. So that's what I'm looking for, those little baby leaves that were still growing when it was picked. So I'm just going to put a little baby leaf of basil on top because I'm just doing it for garnish. I'm not doing it so that you can taste the basil. 
you're just going to do a little bit of greenery for garnish, okay? So here's our little fresh basil on the top. And one last one to get it all set. And voila! Here we have our perfect appetizers for your graduation party. We have our arancini, freshly fried off with a little bit of marinara sauce. We also have our bruschetta with caprese skewers that we made earlier in our beautiful Gaganel kitchen. And we finish off with just a taste of something sweet here in here. Join us again for our next episode of Gaganel Saucy.